Alright, in this video I'm going to do an example of simplifying radical expressions involving variables. And a couple things I think worth noting. First off, notice this is a fourth root instead of a, say, a square root. And also we have some negative exponents underneath the radical, which, which is fine. It's not a problem, but just, you know, a little, a couple things to, to, just to be aware of. There's a couple different order in which you could do the steps. The first thing that I like to do is... So I like to make all the exponents positive. So again, we could write this as 81x to the 4th, y to the negative 12th, z to the 5th, just over 1. And recall, if you have a fraction, like we do underneath the radical, if everything's being multiplied in the numerator and the denominator, you're free to move factors around. So 81, I'm going to leave that on top. x to the 4th, I'm going to leave that in the numerator. The y to the negative 12, I can put that in the denominator and make it y to the positive 12th power. And my z to the 5th, I'm just going to leave that alone. Okay, so equivalently, if you have a fraction and a radical, you can break up the fraction. So it says this is equivalent to having the 4th root of 81x to the 4th, z to the 5th, over the fourth root of y to the twelfth. And now I'm going to convert things into my exponential notation. So I have 81 x to the fourth, z to the fifth, raised to the one fourth power. And in the de denominator, the same way, we'll have y to the twelve. And we're going to have that raised to the one fourth power. Okay, so recall if things are being multiplied in parentheses, when we have an exponent on the outside, we just multiply corresponding exponents. So I'll have 81. If I take 1 times a fourth, I'll simply get 1 fourth. If I take x to the fourth times, uh, so I've got a 4 times a fourth, which would be 4 fourths or to the first power. And then my z, you can think about that as being 5 over 1. So 5 over, over 1 times 1 fourth would be 5 fourths. And in the denominator, I have y to the 12th raised to the 1 fourth. 12 times 1 fourth would give us 12 fourths or 3. So a couple little, little things left that we can do here. Um, I'm going to break this up just a little bit. So recall 81 to the 1 fourth. Again, that's just the fourth root of 81. And to me, that says we want some number that if we multiply it by itself four times, which is the root, we want that to equal 81. Well, I think 3 is the number that does that. If you take 3 to the fourth, we get 81. Therefore, the fourth root of 81 is 3. My x to the first, I'm just going to write as x. We'll come back to the z in just a second. y to the third is OK. What I'm going to do to the z is I'm going to, again, write the exponent as a mixed number. So I think uh, 5 divided by 4. Well, 4 would go into 5 one time with a remainder of 1. And then, again, our denominator is just 4. So now we're almost there. Um, you know, I think once you get used to these, you can certainly skip a couple of these steps. So I would have 3x, z to the first, times z to the 1 fourth, because remember, if I multiply like bases, I add the exponents. So certainly breaking up z to, to the 1 plus a fourth as z times z to the 1 fourth is equivalent. And then we have y to the third. So the last thing I'm going to do here is just simply rewrite. I've got z to the 1 fourth power. I'm just going to write that as the fourth root of z and everybody else, their exponents are nice positive whole numbers, nice positive integers, so I'm going to leave those alone, and I think this would now be a nice simplified form.